Hello guys and welcome back to episode 6 of our EAFC career mode. Dragged back into the relegation scrap after no wins in 7 and now just one point outside the relegation zone. It's been a tough time for Sheffield United. The January transfer window opens in today's episode and I think it's definitely time we bring in some reinforcements. Before we get to January though, two massive games starting off with a massive six-pointer here. Luton Town coming to take us on at Bramall Lane. I'm sticking with the five at the back for now, but if we fail to win in this one, I think it might be time to change up the system. We need a win in this game. Absolutely massive game here. Luton currently sat rock bottom of the table. If we can't win this one, we are in serious, serious trouble. As I mentioned, January transfer window opening today. And I have been taking a look at some transfer targets, both for the future and also for now. Of course, we want to build for the future, but we need to make sure we're in the league again for next year. So I've also been looking at some short term options, which we'll take a look at later on in the episode. Norwood's done well there and there might be a break on if we move it quickly. Jebison's done well there. And Jebison could be in behind here. It's Daniel Jebison. Oh, it's a brilliant save. Is Morris. Has Giles in support down the left. And back to Morris. And Anel's come across and left a big gap for Morris to run into. And he's pulled it back to Clark on the edge. And with Luton's first chance of the game, they take the lead. And that is a huge blow to Sheffield United. And Norwood again. Now into Jebison. Round the corner for Archer. Lovely build up. Archer into Harmer on the edge. Gustavo Harmer. It's wide. Big chance. And we definitely need to play just a little bit slower and take our time. It seems like we're just trying to rush and panicking at the moment. But we do trail at the break in a must win game here. Big second half coming up. Have made a change at the break and we've gone to a four at the back formation for the first time this year. We'll see if it has any difference. That's a poor ball by Jebison. Well, that's good build up. Behrens down the wing and crossed into the middle for Carlton Morris. And this is calamity for Sheffield United. Two down. And an absolute mountain to climb now. Time running out for Sheffield United here and we just haven't looked like scoring. As Behrens nearly scores a header from the edge of the box. Fodderingham turns it behind but we have been so subpar. Late corner for Sheffield United but it looks as if it's going to be too little too late as McBurney does get a goal back but with just a few minutes to play and Luton Town hold on for a massive three points in their bid for survival shocking from Sheffield United and we didn't deserve anything from the game really really poor display I think it's fair to say that my job is most definitely under threat now Carlton Morris with the second which turns out to be the winner but it's another defeat for Sheffield United and now no wins in eight well after that really disappointing loss to Luton Town on home soil as well it's no surprise to see that we have dropped into the bottom three for the first time this season. And what's up next? A trip to the Etihad. We've made the bold decision to change to a four-back formation against probably the worst opponents that we could. Will it make any difference? Probably not on the scoreline, but I'm hoping for a much better performance. When it's not working, you've got to change it and hope that something clicks. Unfortunately, McAtee is ineligible for this game. Of course, Manchester City, his parent club with him being on loan to us here. So he is unavailable. Harmer moves into the number 10 position. And hopefully he will provide a creative spark for us. Here come Man City looking to create something for the first time. Haaland on the spin. And it's into Grealish and City lead. It only took them 15 minutes. And that close control passing in and around the penalty area led to the chance for Grealish, who slammed it home past Fodderingham. And Sheffield United trail again. We just cannot stop the goals going into the back of our net at the moment. Half a chance. That. Here's Hackney from range. Hayden Hackney nearly levels it up. 
for the Blades. What an effort outside of the right boot. Had Edison scrambling. Oh, and Flex not won that. And Grealish makes it too. It's Bernardo Silva, sorry. Beats Fodderingham at the near post. And this could be a long, long afternoon for Sheffield United. Here's Nunes on the edge. Don't concede now. Nunez, good save. And cleared by Bogle. Hackney now. Into the captain, Norwood. And Hackney again. Jebison's on the run and Jebison's in behind. Daniel Jebison hits the post. And still we can't score. And still... And finally, the ball's put over the line. And we do have a goal back. And it's the substitute, Rian Brewster. Ten minutes to play. Can we find a second to pull off an unlikely point here at the Etihad? Brewster, maybe a bit of confidence in us now. Back to low. And now Jebison. And Brewster again. Rian Brewster levels it up for the Blades. Unbelievable scenes at the Etihad. As City throw away a two-goal lead. Lovely build-up. Jefferson back to Brewster, who opens up his body, beats Edison, and is off to celebrate with the travelling fans. Brilliant finish, and the Blades may have just picked up a magnificent point in Manchester. Kanji, don't throw it away now, boys. A Kanji, Bowden, throwing everyone forward here. Good defending, and the break's on. Surely not. Oh, the break was on. And Sheffield United were looking to win it. But what a point. We've stopped the rot at least. Not a point that we would have expected to pick up away at the Etihad. And what a performance from Rian Brewster off the bench. 2-2. What a result. Well, I can't quite believe that. What a comeback. I've just seen that our FA Cup round three tie has been drawn as we will take on West Brom, the Baggies, at Bramall Lane. Now, this might come as quite a welcome distraction for us after our terrible form in the league. We have now actually dropped down to 19th, even after the point against Manchester City. Very, very tight, but we need to get out of that relegation zone. So as we are now into January, I have been doing a bit of scouting and I've sent my scouts out looking for players whose contracts are up come the end of the season. So we're looking for any position. Obviously, uh, they have to be 23 years of age to sign them on a pre-contract, but I've set it at 22 just as there may be a little bit of leeway. And of course, that contract with just a year left. We've got one instruction looking for first team quality and another set to first team prospect so hopefully we get some decent players back whose contracts are expiring in the summer transfer window and there may be a couple of free agent or bargain players that we could pick up we'll see what comes back from our scouts well guys we've just got to the first of january and as if our season wasn't hard enough it's just got a whole lot harder and this is just broken game mechanics right here you can see McAtee, uh, Luke Thomas and LaRucci have all been recalled by their parent clubs because we've not been playing them enough. LaRucci and Thomas, okay, maybe fair enough. They haven't really played. But McAtee's made loads of appearances for us. Maybe not all from the start, but he's come off the bench in most of our games. He's getting game time. He's developing. And they've just recalled him. It's such a broken feature that whenever you sign a player on loan, unless they start every single game they'll get recalled in January so frustrating and we've lost three players it makes the squad smaller we've lost some quality it's just so frustrating we have also sent a young player Antoine Hackford out on a two-year loan to Angers in France good to get him some football I've been trying to loan some of our youngsters out and Antoine Hackford's gonna go and get some game time in France We've also had an offer here for Daniel Jebison, which doesn't really surprise me with how good he has been this year. But from the team that's come in from Bruges, I'm going to reject that. I think he's better better suited staying here at Sheffield United and, uh, and getting good minutes for us in the Premier League. And we do also have a couple of players whose contracts are up at the end of the season. So, of course, they can be approached by other clubs to negotiate for a transfer in the summer. Uh, now, Adam Davis and John Fleck, I think for now, I'm not going to give deals to. But Ben Osborne's played a fair amount this year. I don't really want to lose him on a free so we're going to go and tie him down at least for another year 
So Osborne signed a new two-year deal. He did take a slight wage decrease of just a thousand pounds, but he's done well for us this year. He's very versatile and he's got some good experience as well. So Osborne happy to keep him at the club. Now guys, time for a bit of a scouting update. I think it's about time we said goodbye to Roman Hunt. I don't think he's quite going to make it. Same as Reese French, we've been scouting them for so long, but the potential's just not good enough. Unfortunately, nobody decent from England. I think Dylan Bowen we're going to give a deal to. Uh, Adam Pearce will continue scouting along with Connor Bradley. Uh, Reese Matthews, good potential, but really low overall. Uh, Lloyd Price... Uh, will be rejected and the same as Connor Parker so still nothing really special from Wales or England just yet and as for Scotland it is our last month of scouting we've got Ian Walker and Gordon Mitchell in here both with the same potential I think for now I'm just going to give them both deals as I don't really want to lose them so both will be signed to our youth setup and what I'm actually going to do, guys, whilst I'm at it, is send uh, Frankie Paul back out once again, this time to Northern Ireland. That is a three-month uh, duration for him, so he'll be back at the end of the season along with Archie Haig. So looking at the Youth Academy then, still nothing really special. We've got some players with some decent potential. Dylan Bowen looks like he could be okay. Uh, Harry Matthews, probably still the best pros prospect we have, um, alongside Patrick Nicholson, who could be decent as well but I mean Gordon Mitchell 34 overall how are we ever going to get him to any decent rating I mean I've no idea how this guy's a center back his best stats are pace and dribbling so I'm going to convert him to a winger I'm still not sure there's much of a player in there but with 28 defending there's no way this fella's a center back and finally guys Riley Murray who I was actually quite excited about you can see his potentials really dropped to just 67 to 83 now so I was quite excited about Riley but doesn't look like he's actually got much potential after all. But overall, guys, really not too much in the academy. Couple of players with decent potential, but they're all way off it at the moment. We've just had another loan go through for another of our youngsters heading to the MLS until the end of the season. And I also saw an email coming through in regards to John Fleck. So Antwerp have approached him. To be honest, I'm happy to let him leave on a free at the end of the year. He's barely played for us. He's getting on a bit now and he's not going to be here next year regardless. So bit of a distraction away from the league here. Of course, no wins in nine in all competitions that brilliant result against Manchester City in the previous game but of course in a game like this in the cup against lower league opposition we have to get back to winning ways as I say it might be a nice distraction for us there are a lot of players out there being given an opportunity today so let's see if they can take it here come West Brom shot comes in from the edge of the box and it's flown in past Adam Davis well, this is not the start we wanted. I was just saying it might be a welcome distraction, but instead West Brom are just heaping on the misery. Terrible start from the Blades. And Harmer now plays the 1-2 with Archer. Has Jebison in support, still Harmer. Waits for the runner, Baldock down the right-hand side. Looking for Jebison in the middle. It will find him, Jebison, good save. Norwood the captain to swing the corner in it's a good ball and it's headed over the top well still trailing at the break here and a lot of work to be done I do not want to be heading out of the cup and West Brom could be in here and Bulldog does really well now the break could be on 3v2 here with Harmer and Archer and he might get it back Cameron Archer to race away Cameron Archer to level it up got a little bit lucky the first pass by Harmer was poor and Archer did well to keep it alive and we are back on level terms. And West Brom looking to restore their lead which they have and it's gone through the legs of Greaves and Davis can't keep it out. Fleck, Archer on the run, did he time it? Yes he did. And he's come inside well, still Cameron Archer looking for his second of the game and he's found it danger here strike comes in and Davis parries it behind and Sheffield United survive for a replay still no win for the Blades 
The streak stretches to 10, and we are still without a win. Well, confirmation of John Fleck leaving here. I mean, he's not actually being walked out the door because it's not going through until the summer. So John Fleck departing for Antwerp. But of course, as I say, that will not go through until the summer transfer window. Here we go then, back to matters in the Premier League as we are desperate for this win. Still no victory in our last 10 games. It's got to come from somewhere. Really, really tricky test this as the Hammers take us on at Bramall Lane. Currently sat in eighth place and having a very good season. But as I say, this win's got to come from somewhere. Teremi Paqueta does well. Back to Mehdi Teremi who strikes and it... Every time, every fucking time. I don't know what more I can do there. We forced him to take the strike from the edge of the box. We've stood him up and it's found its way into the back of the net. We've got two defenders there and again, just so unlucky from the Blades. We've not really done anything wrong there. Well, I keep saying that this win will come from somewhere, but to be honest at the moment, I don't know where that somewhere is because it doesn't feel like it's coming anytime soon. Comes inside to Harmer. Back to Osborne, who's given it away, but does well to win it back. And now Harmer looking for Bogle, and Fornals did well to stay with his man. And West Ham playing around with it at the back. And that is one of the most shocking goals that you will see conceded in the Premier League. Alphonse Areola with an absolute howler. It's well cut out by Fornals, who goes back to his keeper, and then he plays a shocking one-two with the Spaniard. Tries to clear the ball, and Archer slides in. And the ball has ended up in the back of the West Ham net. Now, with 25 to go, is it going to be our day today? Are we going to go on to find that winner? Here come West Ham, looking for that goal to put them in front. It's a really poor giveaway. Paqueta, still Paqueta. Oh. My heart has just dropped. I thought that was in. So close to giving West Ham the lead off a mistake as well. That would have been really heartbreaking. Norwood keeping things ticking over. Low. Fleck just waiting for that opportunity. Hackney. It might come here. George. Bulldog. Big save. And it comes off Bulldog again. And is behind for the West Ham goal kick. And that may be the last chance of the game. Kudus away from Bulldog and away from Hackney. Mohamed Kudus, brilliant play. Into Suchek at the back stick. And it's going to be defeat again for the Blades. And I'm, I cannot take this, guys. Every single game. 15 seconds to play. And Kudus has done me dirty down the left. And Suchek ghosts in and couldn't miss. And it's going to be defeat again. And there's the whistle. I can't, I genuinely cannot believe it. We nearly win it down one end with Bulldog. I thought that would be enough to hold on for the point. And West Ham have nicked all three. When it rains, it pours. And it is pouring in Sheffield. This is just, when will this run end? Well, last game of the episode, we travel to the Hawthorns, which is, of course, a real stadium in the game. And at this point, I will take anything. We need to stop this winless run. Even if it's not in the league, I'll take a win in the cup. I've got a pretty strong lineup out there. There have been a few changes, but in the most part, we're very strong because we need this victory. And at this point, as I say, I will take anything. Still waiting for some scout reports back so we can look to strengthen. But yeah, it's, it's been tough, guys. It's been very, very tough. Here comes Fleck. Norwood in support. And now Davis. We've gone for some experience today. Bulldog floats one in for Archer. And it's in. And Cameron Archer's at it again, and that could be a massive confidence booster for him. We are still scoring goals at the moment. It's at the other end where we're struggling. We cannot keep them out. Flick picks it up now and brings it away. Osborne into Harmer. Great football. Fleck 
Now through to Archer and McBurney. How he needs a goal. Ollie McBurney makes it two. And that win may be on its way. Brilliant football by the Blades down the left-hand side. A lovely build-up and McBurney had the finish to go with it. And we may be about to end this horrid, horrid run without a victory. Oh, Norwood dispossessed. And that could spell trouble. And Phillips, and the shot comes in and it's just wide. And West Brom so nearly back into it as Sheffield United architects of their own downfall. West Brom starting to up the tempo now as they look to get back into this. Josh Madger lets fly and Davis turns it behind. And West Brom feeling that they can get back into this with our fragile back four. That's a good ball in. Greaves gets up well and Sheffield United will clear. Norwood out to Robinson and space for the defender. And uh, McBurney's at the back stick. Ollie McBurney. Oh, what a header that is. Ollie McBurney at the double. And that will be Sheffield United in the hat for the fourth round. 3 0, game over. And there is the whistle. The winless run is over for Sheffield United. It may have only come in the cup against lower league opposition, but it could be vital come the end of the season. Well, that could be a huge win to boost our confidence heading into this second half of the season. But as you can see, there is a gap starting to appear just to Crystal Palace in 16th place. There is now a six point difference. So it is really, really tight. We need to start winning some games in the league. And as you can see on the right hand side, huge huge game against Palace on the 31st of Jan and that will come in the next episode. I'm going to still look to strengthen the side as well as I definitely feel like we need reinforcements with those 41 goals conceded. I hope you have enjoyed guys. It's getting pretty tetchy down at the bottom. I'll catch you for the next episode very soon. Peace.